My name is David Holland. I'm an artist here in Oklahoma City. I've been a full-time artist since 2012. Uh, I work here at Current Studio in Oklahoma City. I've lived here since 1977. When I started to try to figure out what I wanted to do as a career, I knew I wanted to do something in art because I always loved working with my hands. And so when I first went to college, my objective basically was to major in both business and art. And I took an oil painting class and I really, really loved that a lot. And that's kind of what I'm doing now is strictly oil painting. The Modern Life series was a series I did uh, that I really loved because it spoke to pertinent issues going on in, in our lives as far as technology and life changes go. That series was really heartfelt and very serious and I wanted a visual image that was intriguing enough that someone wouldn't want to be drawn in by it, but then when they saw it they would kind of realize, oh, that's, you know, this is giving them a message. Actually, I had a showing of my Modern Life pieces in Lawton at the Leslie Powell. I had probably 30, 35 pieces, priced between two and $500 maybe. Of those 35 pieces, I ended up selling two. I kind of had this crisis of confidence and just trying to figure out, well, what, am, what the heck am I going to do? And so my, I thought, well, what do I love? And my two things that I love, one is storm watching, the other is gardening. And so I thought, well, you know, I could easily create a career out of doing still lives of flowers, or I could try to depict clouds or th thunderstorms, which is what I loved. I, I like watching them. They're just really intriguing to me. So the cloudscape work is really entirely different. I did an oil pastel of, of a thunderstorm. Um, I really liked the results, so I kind of started doing more of those. And as I did more and put them out there, people really did respond to them. And so I could see that that was kind of the ticket to my future, really. So I, I started concentrating on cloudscapes primarily after that. In Oklahoma, there's an incredibly supportive artist network. Uh, there are or organizations that I mentioned, OVAC is one, that helps artists uh, in Oklahoma. And artists really do like to help other artists. Uh, I, you know, any time that I have the opportunity to explain something to artists about what I know about the art marketing world or galleries or whatever, I am super happy to share that information with them because it is really difficult to find out that information. A lot of the things that you learn about galleries, you almost can only learn by participating in that system and then making a mistake and, and someone saying, oh, well, you shouldn't have done that. And so you kind of learn as you go along what you should do and what you shouldn't do. My biggest piece of advice, and I wish I had done this from the very beginning, and if you do this from the very beginning, you, it'll be a huge advantage. And so every time somebody approaches you about your art, compliments you about your art, you need to latch onto those people. What is most important is connections. Keep your contacts up to date and keep making them. Make that an active part of your art career. Any way that you can put your art out there and have people interact with it and the, them getting back to you, they get back to you because they like your work. So those are the people you need to keep on your mailing list and keep uh, notified of the things that you do because that's what's going to perpetuate you into a more stable um, career. The other thing is to think about streams of income. Don't only depend on the sale of your art to sustain your career. When you're first starting out, those sales won't be enough for you to keep going in that career. Figure out other streams of income that relate to your talents and use that money to make it so that you can continue to produce the art and put it out there. Like for instance, for me, one stream of income that I do is I carve pumpkins every year. That's a sideline for me and I, I charge a decent amount for pumpkins. So that's a stream of income. That's uh, income coming in that I can use to you know, keep me doing my art or I could produce prints of my work and sell prints of my work. You can give workshops, that's a source of income. You can give seminars, that's a source of income. I show my work at different galleries and also in different venues uh, across the country. Sometimes I'll be invited to do shows and I've had work in the Small Works Great Wonder Show at the um, Cowboy Museum. It's a small works show so the biggest piece that you can put in is 16 inches by 20 inches. Once you get into the show then you, you go ahead and turn in your pieces and then they put them on the wall. Then the night of the show at 6 o'clock they open it up. Each person coming in gets a bid book and inside the ballot book 
there is a ticket. So if someone wants to purchase one of those pieces, there's a box beside each of the pieces that are up on the wall. They fill out their name on that little ticket and put it in the box. Then at seven o'clock, bidding stops and they draw out two names. If their name was chosen for that piece, they have 30 minutes to come and claim that piece and pay for it. If they don't claim that piece, then the second name on the list has 30 minutes to come and claim that piece. And if they don't, then anybody at the show can come and purchase that piece. I was really super fortunate this year in that there was a couple who really liked my pieces a lot. He was drawn for the top piece and she was drawn for the bottom piece. That was really exciting for me to know that both of those pieces are going to the same home. It's like a snowball, really. I mean, it, uh, as things progress and you get knowledge, more people know about your work, you do start to gain success and that's kind of the way it works. It's, it's a slow process though, so you have to have patience and you have to have a certain amount of drive and stick-to-itiveness uh, to do that.